What up, what up? It's your boy, Mr. Vinny Dangerous, and I'm back with another edition of the Dangerous Minds podcast. And this is the first of a four-part series that I am dubbing The Death of Chivalry. And we are currently on part one of that four-part series called This D Ain't Free. I'm trying to keep it PC because I just recently found out that my grandmother and a friend of hers actually tunes in to my podcast. Uh, I'm not changing up everything, but I said I'll keep at least the title PC right now. You know, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. You know, follow the Instagram page. Tune in every week. Join the email list. Uh, you know, participate in the discussion post. I really appreciate it. That's what drives this show and motivates me for to do this every week. Plus, it's fun. I like to use my ability to think freely and speak freely as long as it's legal. So... I will gladly use the United States Constitution in that regard, among others. But let's get on with it. I'm going to let you know right now. I'm going to let you know right now. Women, there are going to be a lot of you women out there that's not going to like this. That's not going to like this show. And you know what? When it comes to this, when it comes to this shit right here, I don't care. I have a very interesting opinion on this conversation. Because I think that if you are a person, not just a woman, I'm not just going to put this on women, because there are people that feel this way. If you are a person that believes that gender roles should be completely erased. Whether it's between a man and a woman, between a same-sex relationship, or when it comes to transgender and gender identity. If you feel like these things should be abolished in the society we live in today, but still expect chivalry to come from a man, You are a contradiction. That's how I feel. The great comedian Dave Chappelle, shout out to Dave Chappelle for his wonderful job he did on SNL. The only SNL episode that me and my dad on separate occasions, but we watched it. The entire episode because of this man. First time I've ever done it. First time he's done it in a long time. And I'm a little sick, so it's going to be a lot of like sniffling and stuff. I'm not sick, just this weather, like this flip-flop North Carolina weather. One minute is warm, one minute is cold. It's really bothering my sinuses. So I apologize if a lot of little sniffling is in the microphone. But yeah, so I feel like you're a contradiction. I feel like you are a person that is in this weird-ass society we live in. That wants all the good and can't take the bad. Now, when it comes to the feminist movement, I am with you 100% when it comes to women's rights with their body, women's rights in the workplace, and just women in general being seen on the same playing field as a man. But... In this article I read in the Huffington Post by a woman named, hold on, let me, let me, because I have my notes here, and I thought it was right in front of me, but it wasn't. Uh, okay, this name, her name is Toria Sheffield. She wrote this article for the Huffington Post back in 2015, and she said, the article was called, Dear Chivalry, Please Die and Stay Dead. Well, basically, I'm not going to go through everything she talked about in the article. But basically, she said, she says that for women 
to achieve equal status in this society we live in, things like chivalry need to go. Because there's still an expectation that makes you sound like a hypocrite when it comes to how men and women react. And one of the it's one of the things I've actually wanted to talk about for a long time. That's why I'm breaking it up into a four part series. Uh, spoiler alert, this is not going to be something that's going to happen week to week. I'm not going to do this four parts for four weeks in a row. It's just going to come, you know, when see fit. It's going to be developed naturally. So if you want to be a part of the discussion, like this episode is just me. The next episode could be the discussion panel I have with a bunch of guys on the topic. Or then we could have a discussion panel with a bunch of ladies on this topic. And then, you know, the fourth episode could be kind of like a, a conclusion, like a summary of all three. But this right here is just going to be my uh, my thoughts on it. And, you know, my personal opinion, because I've wanted to do this for a long time because I see it all the time. I see the same people that argue about how men are treated so differently and I mean women are treated so differently than men in society and things are expected of women in the society by men and their you know their ex- existence almost is defined by men and then in the same breath expect certain things out of men that kind of contradict your whole argument on this right like one of the things that I've always had a problem with is that I really do feel like in this society, there is a society of people that believe that women should not be told to be ladies, but women are able to tell men that they need to be gentlemen. And that, that fucks with me really bad because like there's this little trigger in my head. It's like, I'm starting to ask myself, why am I doing this? When I ask a woman out on a date and I offer to pay for the date while she's going on and on about how she feels like men should get, you know, women and men should be on equal playing fields. It's like, why am I expected to pay for the date? Why am I expected to hold the door for you? I'm not saying that I have a problem with doing these things in general because I do them all the time. But then there's that little part of me in the back of my head when I see, when I hear these conversations that make me wonder, why are we doing this? Why is this expected of me? But I can't expect anything from you. I can't expect you to cook and clean the house. But you expect me to be the provider. You can't be the nurturer, but I have to be the provider. Okay, let me, let me back that up because there is that there is one of that is one of the things that you know is being talked about and that, that has been talked against. But there's still an expectation of a certain a certain role that a man should take in the relationship. There's that you know it's kind of defined and it's edged in stone and nobody's arguing against it. But then it's only argued against. When it's in the conversation of, so you say a woman can't do this, but it's never discussed on, well, why do I have to do this? <laughs> you know, like as a man, like, why do I have to be that guy? Like, why do I have to be nice to you when nice guys finish last? So I this also was inspired by this video that I saw on Facebook funny video but some real real shit these guys named all deaf digital i shared it on facebook i saw it i say their videos flow all the time but these two particular videos caught my eye and i laughed and then i shared it with a bunch of my female friends female acquaintances and they told me that that guy was just being an asshole all right, so I'm going to tell you the first one. The first one's a little older. I saw this way back, right? <laughs> the guy, you know, is there. And him and his girl, it starts off with them sitting in the car. Well, the whole video is them sitting in the car. And 
you know, it's, I guess the date is at the end of the date, and he's about to drop her off, and she's smiling, and, you know, she looked like she had a good time. She's like, well, she said it, like, I had a really good time, and, you know, we should do this again sometime. And he flashed back to when she said that she liked it when he was brutally honest. I mean, not brutally honest, but she liked the fact that he was honest. So he was brutally honest at this point and said, you know how people, you know, after they say, like, you know, this is fun, we should do this again? Yeah, let's never do this again. And then he goes on about, like, basically, he went on a date expecting to get the draws. Now, I did do an episode about consent, and one of the things we talked about with Worthy Women, shout out with shout out to Worthy Women. I appreciate y'all and I support y'all movement. They have the new Worthy clothing line out, apparel line out right now. I cop the shirt. They got shirts for men too. You know, that's a cheap plug for them. Hop you know, holler at them on Instagram, Worthy Women N C all one word. You know, give them a shout out, support the movement, buy a t shirt. It's you know, a cheap plug right there. But one of the things we did discuss on the topic of consent is when men ask a woman out expecting to get some draws and being upset. Now, on one level, it shouldn't be an expectation. I mean, maybe it's something that you hope for, but it shouldn't be an expectation. It shouldn't be the thought that I took you out so I should, you know, get the draws, like, automatically. That is not what I'm talking about here. (laughs) In the back of your mind, though, when you take a woman out, you have an, a hope. It may not be specifically the draws, but maybe you're working towards a relationship or something of the sort. But whatever your intention was, and you don't reach that goal, you, you might be a little upset. I mean, it's kind of like when you go to the slot machines in Vegas. You put your quarters in, you would like to hit the jackpot but you're not necessarily expecting to hit the jackpot you're just hoping that if you put your money into this thing long enough maybe you'll get to the goal you're trying to reach which is the money you're trying to get but then you could come out at the end of it broke and disappointed that's that's what taking a woman out on a date feels like to me and I'm not necessarily saying sex, but when this guy was just straight up like, yo, son, you, I took you out, and then I find out on a date that you were saving yourself for marriage, and I just spent this money and that money. He wasn't necessarily saying, like, yo, you have to give me the draws, but he's just saying, I really don't really want to date you now because I know, or, you know, I don't really want to deal with you now because I know I'm not going to get the draws. Because you want to get married, and I don't see that right now. (laughs) Like, you want to save it for marriage, and that's not what I see right now. And I thought, yo, this was so real. Like, this is, like, women thought he was an asshole. But then women want him to be honest. Like, this, when she said that, I've heard that so many times. I've heard that women say, and it's one of the things we talked about. Like, if women were, like, if men were just honest, right? If we were honest about how we felt. When in situations like that, and we were just straight up like, yo, look, I ain't getting draws, so I'm dip. I'm a dip. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Like, expecting a woman to take her, you know, to drop the draws and, you know, making her feel bad because she didn't do it or even trying to take it, that's fucked up. But just straight up saying, yo, I ain't trying to deal with you because this is what I, my intentions were. My intentions were to get the draws, and now that I know I can't get the draws, I'm out. I'm dipping. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Just say, look, I'm going to try my luck somewhere else. You have a nice day kind of thing. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. But then there's, but that goes against the, the gentleman code. And that's one of the things that women feel like does not exist anymore. And that's why the whole chivalry is dead type of bullshit came out. And what I look, I feel like on a certain level, being chivalrous is being a damn fool. <laughs> Like, I mean, certain things, like, I hold the door open. I hold the door open for everybody. 
I see somebody coming, and they close enough to where they can, you know, like they're going to come into where I'm at, but the door might slam. I'm going to hold it open for a few for a few seconds if I'm not in a rush, if I'm not in a hurry. But all of that other stuff kind of get miscommunicated as being thirsty and soft in today's society. Like, you know, the bad guy narrative. You want somebody a little rough around the edges that might talk to you crazy every once in a while or might, you know, be a little bit more rough on you sometimes. That narrative right there is one of the biggest reasons why the chivalry thing just kind of makes you look like a sucker now. Because you're doing all this stuff, and then you pretty much going to get friend-zoned. Which is not going to always happen, but it happens a lot. And that's why a lot of guys is like, fuck it, we're not going to do this no more. This is not what we're doing, because that's not what attracts women. At least not in our eyes. Like, to say you want a chivalrous guy... But then you like a roughneck. It just kind of just makes you look like, well, what's the point of me going all out right now? But, okay. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. All right. So, the second video from these guys, the one I just recently saw, was when this guy took this girl out on a date. Now, he's actually on a date, or so he thought, because he took her out on a date, and then he was like, yo... You know, this is one of the best dates I've ever I've been on in a while. And she was like, um, excuse me, date? No, I told you, like, I'm just single. Like, I'm trying to, um, you know, just, I just got a relationship. And I'm just trying to be single and have fun. And he's like, oh, word. All right, cool, cool. And then so the bartender come by. I mean, not, not the bartender, the waiter come by with the bill. And he was like, oh, nah, I'm going to need you to cut this bill in half because I pay for dates. We just two friends having a drink. So that means you could pay for your own shit. And he just breaks it down like, you know, basically you used me because you wanted to go out. You ain't had no money. You were thirsty and wanted to get a drink. So you agreed to go out with me just for me to turn around and pay for this date, get all nice, thinking that shit was going to, be some, just like the last guy in the last video. He he thought if I you know take you out, I'm gonna get some buns. This guy right here though, you know he might have had some more pure intentions. He might have actually thought, hey, this could be something. She cute. She seems interesting. Let's you know let's try this. I'm gonna take her out on a date. Now he's on a date thinking more genuinely, like yo, some stuff could happen. And if you took her out on a date or if she turns you down, all right, cool. You know, bite that book. I mean, if you take her out on a date and it don't work out, like, you know, thing, you know, wasn't as cool like, as you thought it was going to be, or you had a good time, but she didn't have a good time and she ain't really trying to do this no more. All right, cool. Bet. Um, you know, just, you know, take that L and move on. But, for her to agree to go on a date, let him pay for everything just to turn around and say this wasn't a date, that's fucked up. So when he went off and was just like, yo, I got dressed for this shit. I look fly. She, you know, got her back out, her titties out. Basically, it just felt like she was enticing the situation. Maybe not necessarily, but, you know, it's just the point is that she... Knew what she was doing. She knew that she was using a guy that had shown genuine interest in her and using that as a way to just get some free shit. Because if she was not interested in him, she should have just said nah. Or at least go out and offer to pay for your own shit. But it was an expectation that because he took her out, he was supposed to pay. He was supposed to pick up. He was supposed to make the move. He was supposed to pick her up, take her out, have a good time, throw his money around. But there was no expectation that was on her. 
at the end of that. She could go out on a date and be and do whatever she wanted to do and be whoever she wanted to be. He could, he's on a date with her and she's not on a date with him. She's just getting some free shit. She's getting shown a good time. Even though she had no intentions of doing, of taking it anywhere. Like if you're seeing how it goes, it's one thing. But you literally went on the, you went out with him on the intention of using him as a way to have a a nice night out. Because you ain't been out. Or you wanted something to drink and you didn't want to pay for it. That's the problem. That's where the contradiction comes in. Because now in a society, there's no expectation for the woman. Like, there's a certain role you don't want to play no more. You don't want to be the one that is expected to cook and clean and do all this other stuff. Like, there's no woman's place. And I get that. And I respect that. I feel like there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to that. It should just be whatever is good for your relationship. If you're in a relationship and you and your significant other, like we all married or whatever, like y'all uh, agree that you stay home and you watch the kids and cook and clean while he goes out and works, that's what y'all decide to do. If y'all both decide that y'all going to be two working married people with your own careers and goals and then... I guess have a babysitter or pay for daycare. That's your decision too. I don't think there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to that. So that's why the expectation should not be there when it comes to things like that. But there's still an expectation of what a man should and should not be doing in their relationship. And I'm going to need you to choose which one do you want. Do you want there not to be an expectation of a specific gender role? Or do you want the man to cook? I mean, do you want a man to take you out on that date and pay for everything? Give you his jacket when it's cold outside. Walk on the side closest to the road when y'all walking on the sidewalk. Or do you want to take your real old school and have him put the jacket in the puddle when just for you to step over, which I thought was the dumbest shit. I've always thought that was so, I thought that was stupid. I really thought like, why would you do that? Why can't you just walk over the damn puddle? Like, why can't you just go walk around it? Like, I don't understand why I got to take my jacket off just for you to walk on it. So I have a wet, dirty jacket just so you could take one step over this little ass puddle <laughs> And if the puddle's too damn big, why didn't we just walk around the motherfucker in the per- first place? Like, when I would see the the uh, cartoons, when somebody would do that dumb shit and like, Looney Tunes or whatever, and then a car would drive by and soak them both, I thought, that's what both of you dumbass motherfuckers get. That's what you get for expecting him to do that dumb shit just for you to walk over this damn puddle. And that's what his dumbass get for agreeing to do the shit. Both of y'all deserve to be soaked with muddy, dirty-ass water. But that's just how I felt. And I was only like maybe five, six, or seven when I saw that shit. And I thought I had that thought. But as little boys growing up today, I feel bad for y'all. See, it was ingrained in my head real early. I don't know if it was parents. I, you know, I can't really remember. I don't know if it was parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles. I don't know if it was family. I didn't know if it was friends. I don't know if it was just some, you know, stuff that I saw on television or saw when I was out and about with, you know, as a little kid. I don't know why. I don't know what it was, but it was ingrained in my head that there were certain things that men did for women. But it was never explained to me what a woman is supposed to do for me, because there's always kind of like a woman can do whatever she wants to do. It's her choice, but you don't have a choice because you were deemed something else. When you don't do it. And that's almost the same thing that, you know, movements like the feminist movement are fighting against when it comes to women. Now, there are bigger issues when it comes to women's, I mean, a woman's choice to choose on 
decisions with her body or, you know, things with equal pay, like I said. Those are big issues that there is no debate about whether that is an ongoing thing. But when it comes to gender-specific roles, you're going to have to pick and choose which is which. Don't expect something from somebody if you don't want somebody to expect something from you. And that goes for everybody across the board. So I agree with Ms. Sheffield. The guys at All Dev Digital are speaking my mind because I was in those same situations. And you have two choices, what it feels like. The third choice is never an option. There's no rapey shit going on here. So that is never an option. But you have either two choices. You have either to be the guy that's going to suck it up, realize that you did spend money on that woman that you thought you was either going to have sex with or have a relationship with, and either going to continue to talk to this woman, even though in the back of your mind you don't want to, Or the second option is you're going to be a complete fucking asshole and just leave her the fuck alone and tell her or tell her like it is. Either way, you're not dealing with this girl no more. And it's because of what you feel like on the inside, but you are an asshole because of it. (laughs) Like I tell people all the time, if you know, I, you know, growing like in college, right? I knew who I was. I was a sexual being. I knew I wanted to be in a sexual relationship. And if I was ever approached by a woman that did not want to be in a sexual relationship, I would just completely avoid that situation altogether. Now, you you may think that's crazy because I could be missing out on a really great girl. I could be missing out on a great opportunity to find love and romance and all that other stuff. And I say... No, because I know me, and I would have fucked it up. (laughs) I probably would have cheated on her. I probably would have ended up laying with another chick that I knew was about that life at the time that this girl wasn't. The girl in the first video that I'm talking about, she said she was saving herself for marriage, right? And that's an admirable thing. But he knew that that's not what he was doing. He knew that even if he was in a relationship with her at some point, he was going to want to have sex before he put that ring on her finger. That was him. There ain't nothing wrong with feeling like that. So he just said, look, I'm going to let you know right now I'm out because we both got two different ideologies when it comes to this shit. So I feel like it's better. We just part ways right now before shit get ugly. (laughs) You know, like, cheating and all the other stuff that kind of comes with when you want something and your significant other does not want to give it to you. So you decide to go find it somewhere else. So it's either you leave now or shit just goes down, goes down the wrong way later down the line. So I say you might as well be upfront and honest from the beginning, but people are going to look at you and think you're an asshole for that. Like, you're wrong for that. Just like I said, people thought I was crazy because they thought I'd be missing out on a great opportunity. But you flip reverse that same situation, and if she felt like she wanted to give it up to me, knowing that that's what I would want to do, then I would be wrong because it felt like I pressured her to do that. Or she would be wrong because... She gave in to my expectation. But it would still fall back on me. And that wraps up part one. I'm just giving you my thoughts. Now you can leave your comments. Let me know how you feel. Hit me up. Tell me how you feel about my opinions on the matter. And tell me, do you feel like chivalry is dead? So until next time, it's your boy Vinny Dangerous. This has been part one of the death of chivalry, and I'll see you again soon.